Hello everyone, you're welcome to Jam Vibes. There is so much that has been actually happening around Emerson Nangangwa and in today's video, Emerson Nangangwa tightens up screws on ministers' foreign trips and this has actually left so many people with jaw-dropping reactions. Before I give you all the entire details of what is transpiring, do all to please follow Jam Vibes, like this video, drop a comment and most importantly, share this video with all of your friends, families and all the groups you find yourself in because you are creating awareness and making people know what is happening on ground. President Emerson Nangangwa has tightened screws on foreign trips by cabinet ministers and top government officials as part of new measures to manage government expenditure and redirect resources towards service delivery. In an address to the newly appointed ministers in Harare sometime yesterday, Nangangwa said, Ministers and permanent secretaries will no longer be allowed to travel out of the country at the same time. In his exact words, he said, and I quote, In this regard, no minister and permanent secretary can both be out of the country at the same time, as this has negative implications on service delivery and general government business, he revealed. More to this, furthermore, travel outside the country will be strictly limited to those programs which are of strategic importance and contribute to Zimbabwean countries' national priorities. Nangangwa's remarks come a few days after he hired a private jet from Swiss company Comlux, which took him and a delegation of over 75 people to the United Nations General Assembly in New York. His delegation included an advanced team and was joined in New York by yet another group headed by Foreign Affairs Minister Frederick Shava. Nangangwa said the Mutapa Investment Fund, formerly known as the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Zimbabwe, would save as the moral compass for the new cabinet team and other arms of government. In the exact words, Nangangwa revealed, and I quote, the recently gazetted statutory instrument number 156-2023 on the Mutapa Investment Fund has far-reaching implications for our state-owned enterprises as well as the state of our economy as a whole. I expect Cabinet to play its part in line with the overall vision of this new development, Nangangwa said. The statutory instrument transferred the shareholding of 20 state-owned companies to Mutapa Investment Fund without parliamentary involvement, with analysts saying it exposes the entities to looting. It was reviewed, and I quote, It is imperative that we continue to refine and perfect our procurement system in order to promote value for money in all government programs and projects. Transparency and accountability must remain the hallmarks of this administration. Challenges encountered and lessons learned from the first five years of the Second Republic should be reference points for all of us. At its first meeting, Cabinet announced the repeal of colonial laws, arguing that they were no longer relevant in the current Zimbabwean context. The laws include the Frederick Clayton Trust Act, that is Chapter 17, Sub 2, Service of Documents Telegraph Act, Chapter 8, 13, Settled Estate Leasing Act, Chapter 2019, and War Marriage Validation Act, Chapter 5, Sub 15. The nation is being informed that the recommendation to repeal the above-mentioned act was born out of the realization that these laws have become obsolete and should be deleted from the statute books, Information Minister Genfan Muswere said during a post-cabinet briefing. All of these things have been trending already on the media for just the wrong reasons. But then again, you all tell me in the comment section without necessarily judging your two cents about all of this. I love you also dearly and do all to take good care of yourselves, please.